Happy New Year's guys. Today we're gonna look back on 70 different manga I read in 2023 and rate each one on a scale of 1 to 5. 1 being this work is a crime to humanity and 5 being it's pretty darn good. I would recommend it. There are way fewer 1s and 2s this year because in the past I used to force myself to finish series even if I didn't like them. But now I've started dropping series that suck because there's just not enough time in the day. I won't list every dropped series, there's just way too many of them. The only one I really remember dropping was Skullface bookseller Honda-san, which was just a case of wrong expectations on my part. Was hoping for cozy slice of life humor, but it was more niche gag humor. Also won't be covering animated movies or webcomics, but I will rate the animated series I watched. Enough rambling, let's get into it. These first couple dozen I've already spoken about in depth in another video, so I'll keep it brief. Sorry for My Familiar Volume 1 was a super cute father-daughter adventure concept. I saw that the series finished recently, so I will try to read the rest sometime. Gave this one a 4 stars. Giant Spider and Me, A Post-Apocalyptic Tale, Volumes 1 through 3 complete. This is the coziest slice of life cooking manga. I was hoping for more existential dread since it's set in a post-apocalyptic setting, but eh. Not complaining about the wholesome sweetness of this short three volume series, 4 out of 5. Flying Witch Volume 1, I still use the one Mandrake reaction image from this volume to this day. Um, a really great premise to the story, the art could be improved, but I'll probably check out the anime sometime soon, 3 out of 5. The Invisible Man and His Soon To Be Wife Volume 1. Somehow, the female lead of the series reminds me of how fan artists used to draw Frisk Undertale. Um, Saccharine's sweet romance though, with a cool blue accent color, which was quite unique. 4 out of 5. Die Dark Volumes 1 through 5 by Kyu Hayashida. This is my favorite manga at the moment. I've recommended this series already in so many videos, so I'll keep it brief, but it's unique, fun, chaotic, and at the core of a bunch of cool world building, sci-fi space horror and adventure is a theme of friendship. There's also a hot girl boss character, which the mangaka loves to draw fan service for, so honestly, what's not to love? I gave this one a 5 out of 5. The Masterful Cat is Depressed Again Today, Volume 1. This is a perfect cat person manga. Um, I adore the portrayal of the gigantic anthropomorphic cat. The fact that it doesn't speak was a great writing choice because the character feels more believably feline. 4 out of 5. Kageki Shoujo The Curtain Rises. This is a one-shot prequel to the main series Kageki Shoujo. I was hoping for some sapphic vibes from this series, but that isn't really present. Uh, just a warning, this volume contained ED content. Not sure if that's a running theme of the rest of the series, but it very well could be, since this is one that follows a bunch of girls in an acting school. Uh, if that's uncomfortable to you, maybe avoid this one. Other than that, I got some very classic shoujo vibes from this prequel volume. That's a three stars from me. Uh, Saint Young Men, volume one of the Omnibus. For some reason, Jesus and Buddha being roommates in a gag humor series just works. Um, kind of low-key genius. Four out of five. My Dear Friend Nokotan Volume 1, another gag humor series with slight gals being pals uh, vibes. If you like watching VTubers, you'll probably enjoy this one, 3 out of 5. A Man and His Cat Volumes 1 and 2. 
If you find old men attractive, the artist of this series does as well. Overall, a cute base concept for a lot of fluffy interactions between a widower and his cat. 4 out of 5. Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko Deluxe Edition Omnibus Volumes 1 and 2. Pros, the art is gorgeous for the series. A stunning old school style that just flows in every panel, every scene. Uh, cons, since the series is a bit older, there's some stuff that I could really do without, uh, especially getting some Violet Evergarden adjacent longing vibes, and the romance subplot is my least favorite aspect of that show as well, so I'm gonna give this one a 4 out of 5. I'd love to see this concept of an android in a post-apocalyptic world done by a modern creator, perhaps. A perfect version of this concept would easily make my top 10 manga of all time list, I think. Very partial to it. Children of the Whales Volume 1. High fantasy can be a little tough to understand for me, so I think I might try watching the anime for this series, 3 out of 5 for this volume of the manga, Judge volumes 1 and 2. I would like to keep reading the series, but volume 3 seems to have been lost in circulation at my library, and honestly I'm not in any rush to continue, so this one's on the back burner for now. It seems like a pretty average um, majority vote death game, sort of. Affair, 3 out of 5. Witch Hat Atelier, Volumes 1 through 8. Such beautiful world building and atmosphere. The inventive paneling of the series conveys a sense of whimsy and storybook magic. It really sells you on that, that few series have ever truly achieved. I can't wait to keep reading, honestly. The only worry is that it's gonna break my heart. The tone's gotten a bit darker by the end of volume 8, but if the series goes on to discuss the complex issues it's brought up well, it'll be an easy 5 in a few more volumes. I'm just holding on to the last star for the moment, so it's 4 out of 5 for now. I've never before seen a series with a officially published copium. This is a spin-off cooking manga featuring the cast of characters from Witch Hat Atelier in a seemingly alternate universe where they cook each other tasty food with magic. It's so needed after the soul-crushing plot of the main series. Imagine if other darker series did this. For example, JJK they would rack in so much money. But lovely artwork and sweet character interactions from this one. 4 out of 5. The old men shippers are uh, eating well, but I would like more focus on the gals in future volumes since they definitely are my favorite characters from the main series. The artist is also nailing the art style of the main series, which deserves major kudos in itself. The Innocent by Avi Arad. This is a one-shot. Pretty sure this was created by a graphic novel creator who wanted to try his hand at manga, and you can really tell. It feels like a generic power fantasy graphic novel, but in a manga art style. 3 out of 5. Bakano Volume 1. Imagine Dorarara, but set in New York, and the characters are all members of various crime families. Loving what I've read so far, but finding volumes of this older series has been kinda tough. 4 out of 5. Doubt, 2 volumes complete. This series is pretty much what you'd get if you opened a can of generic store brand death game and emptied it out on a plate. Imagine a processed block of spam just sort of glorping out of a tin. Uh, 
this one's a three out of five. Dan to Dan volume one. Super glad the series has been picking up popularity recently. While absurdist off the walls gag humor is not my cup of tea. The artwork, anatomy, and tone of the series is just so fun. I can see a lot of people having a blast with it, 4 out of 5. One Dance Volume 1. This manga feels like a webcomic in so many ways. No hate to webcomics, they're popular for a reason, and I do read a lot of them. But I'm just really burnt out of power fantasy ones at the moment, so this is a 3 out of 5 from me. Our Dreams at Dusk, Volume 1. Beautiful artwork, but I prefer a little subtlety when manga discuss serious topics, and this felt like being slapped in the face repeatedly with a cinder block. 4 out of 5. Yotsuba, Volumes 1 through 5. This series is the definition of chicken noodle soup for the soul. Uh, so sweet so cozy, and endless panels which make for great reaction images. Honestly, anime announcement when? Because the world needs to see the frog scene animated. It's just so cute. 4 out of 5. Alice in Borderlands volumes 1 through 3. I loved the live action series on Netflix, and reading the games in manga format has been interesting so far. But I'm not sure if this manga is quite hitting the same emotional highs. Really could use without the awkward fan service as well. 3 out of 5. Hitorihime My Hero Volume 1. Words cannot describe my disdain for this genre. 2 out of 5. Gangsta Volumes 1 through 8. Volume 1. Of this series is an easy 5 out of 5. Easy. Adored the atmosphere of this gritty setting and the character interactions as well. That said, Gangsta is on indefinite hiatus at the moment. There are 8 volumes total and the story felt like it meandered a bit in the middle before getting back on track just in time to leave off on a major, major cliffhanger. I, I need, I need the rest of the story so bad, but it just does not exist. Um, if the manga is ever completed, I'll reread the entire thing and reevaluate it. For now, taking into account the stuff in the middle, I'd give it a 4 out of 5 holistically. The anime opening, Renegade, is also great, worth a listen. Um, Doomsday with My Dog, Volume 1. This should be a one-shot. Not sure where future volumes would go, story-wise, but this Farcoma-esque compilation was a cool concept, 3 out of 5. The Walking Man, this one's a one-shot about a man who enjoys taking walks around town. Loved the peaceful slice of life walking scenes which filled this hardbound edition. The minimal use of dialogue added to the chill vibes perfectly. And then toward the end of the book, the artist just threw in a random adultery scene which tossed the entire tone and message out the window pretty much. I just don't understand why that was included because it was drawn in a different art style and didn't seem to be part of the initial content. Um, really wish they left that out or put some hint about it in the description because the rest of the book is deeply romanticized tonally. Three stars for this one. Akira, six volumes complete. This is such a fun, fast-paced, classical epic. Once you start, the series just takes you on a high-speed motorcycle ride through the well-drawn highways of post-apocalyptic Japan. The series has not aged perfectly, 
content warnings for misogyny, nudity, and attempted sexual assault in almost every volume, but you can't deny the action and adventure is overall exhilarating. Beautiful artwork as well, four stars. Boys Run the Riot, four volumes complete. This is one of the first manga I read that I'd actually consider solid representation. It's a real shame that the series felt like it got axed and the last volume had to rush to wrap up because things were just getting good. Would have loved to see more slice of life moments with the other club members and watch relationships develop at the comfortable pace other high school slice of life series are afforded. My only real critique of the series, its passable art, I'm sure would have also improved as the series went on, as the author drew the characters more because that happens with a lot of other long-running manga. Definitely, definitely want to read more works like this though in the future, 4 out of 5. Children of the Sea, Volume 1, absolutely chomping at the bit to read more of the series and watch the movie adaptation as well. Just need to find the other volumes. Uh, so far, it's been a solid and gorgeous tale of ocean magic and alternative love. I adore nautical settings, especially when the artist has the skill to capture that magical watery feeling of being submerged and overall i'm just so impressed by volume one of this series uh five out of five easy now a brief interlude to speed run the anime we'll start off with pokemon the indigo league 52 episodes i think out of 80 whatever streaming service i watched it on didn't have the complete season so I just watched everything that was available on there and honestly that was enough to get a little a little taste of nostalgia. Pokemon is a show that has deeply impacted so many people's lives and I have a soft spot for nostalgic series 4 out of 5. I actually hope to reread the Pokemon Adventures manga series this year at least the first two box sets which cover the first two generations of the games. Next up is High Rise Invasion, one season, 12 episodes. I went in with low expectations to this one and actually enjoyed this series more than I thought I would. The relationship between the two main gals is adorable and honestly kind of need a season two for the series, four stars. Kotoro lives alone, one season, 10 episodes. The series follows a young neglected boy who moves into an apartment complex by himself and meets the washed up adults who live there. The concept is deeply depressing, but the mediocre animation is made up for by the character dynamics and emotion packed into this simple, cute little show which at the end of the day is quite heartwarming, 4 out of 5. Darwin's Game, 1 season, 11 episodes. If I had a nickel for every time an anime has used the concept of Laplace's demon in a way which makes us wince, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice. This is a generally average death game, 3 out of 5. Comey Can't Communicate, 2 seasons, 24 episodes. There is some fan service and anime weirdness, but the animation is great and the dub is fantastic. I'm quite far in the manga at the moment, chapter 356 or so, and honestly, love the general optimistic message of the series a lot. Other pros of the anime though include the non-binary character actually getting they them pronouns and the narrator being perfect and funny. Overall, this is a feel-good show with endearing character dynamics, 4 out of 5. Dora Hedoro, one season, 13 episodes. I watched this one twice, pretty much back to back. 
Hidoro Hidoro is another series I never shut up about, so I'll keep this brief as well. Essentially, it follows a dude with a lizard head and his girl boss best friend as they get up to various hijinks in the slums. The anime is a wonderful adaptation of Hayashida's work and art style. The CGI is a little weird at times, but you know, that slight jank factor actually adds to the chaotic tone of the series, which isn't something you can say for a lot of anime. Hayashida's work can also be a little confusing at times, and the anime helps make the plot more understandable slash accessible, so that's another win for it. Also, every single song on the soundtrack is a hit. I used to play the endings on loop and just vibe to them for hours, so definitely recommend giving them a listen if you haven't heard them yet. TLDR, it's just so good. Um, need the rest of the series adapted. And I also desperately need a Blu-ray slash DVD of the English dub. Uh, considered picking up the Japanese discs, but they don't contain the English dub, so we just have to wait, I guess. 5 out of 5 for season 1. Shaman King, 52 episodes complete. This one's another classic series. Originally read a portion of the manga in middle school and really enjoyed the art style, but never got to see the ending of the series. And this new adaptation was a solid way to experience it. The kind shonen pro tag is trending in a lot of modern series, but I'd say Yo was the original for that sort of character. I have such a soft spot for the dude, honestly, four out of five. The culprit Hanazawa, one season. This one's one of those short episode miniseries spin-offs for Case Closed and follows a prospective criminal moving into Bakertown. I wasn't expecting this to be so funny actually. The self-aware humor is fantastic and I was dying at the look into life in a crime-ridden town from the perspective of a normal person. Um, adored this so much and need more. Four stars. Tiger and Bunny, 25 episodes. It's like Power Rangers, My Hero Academia, except the romantic tension between the protagonists is palpable. A solid and enjoyable show where it lacks in animation, it more than makes up for with its interesting and multi-dimensional cast of characters, so I'd give it a four. Um, and I said no movies, but Tiger and Bunny, The Rising, this is movie two. The first movie covers most of the first season, so it's a recap movie. Um, it's fine to skip that if you've watched the anime, and then just watch this movie after. It's basically Tiger and Bunny season two. Really loved the story in this as well, four out of five. Next is Kakegurui and XX, so the two seasons of Kakegurui, which is 24 episodes. This one's pretty popular too, but basically a girl with a gambling addiction transfers to an elite school where respect is earned through staking everything in various gambling matches. The anime adaptation is a fun thriller series. I'd best describe as a bag of potato chips. It may not be a masterpiece, but hey, it's a good time and sometimes that's all you want. The unhinged expressions from the manga haven't been translated perfectly to animation, so the source material is better at showing the extent of some of those expressions, but overall the anime is a solid way to consume the series, 3 out of 5. Kakegurui Twin, 1 season 6 episodes, this is a spin-off series following Mary and her friend. It's not quite up to the same production quality as the original series, but it's still a lot of fun. A solid enough spin-off slash prequel that scratches the Kakegurui itch, 3 out of 5. Cyberpunk Edgerunners, 1 season 10 episodes, 
Ooh, okay, content warnings out the wazoo for this one. Make sure to check them if you're not familiar with the source material. This anime was a fantastic intro to the bleak world of cyberpunk. Accessible and depressing are the two words I'd use to describe it. Beautiful colors, animation, and character design. Just a little sad for me. I'd give this one a 4 out of 5. And the song I Really Want to Stay at Your House is gorgeous as well. Definitely worth a listen. Hunter x Hunter, 6 seasons, 148 episodes. I rewatched the entirety of the 2011 anime this year and remembered just how good Hunter x Hunter is. It's a faithful adaptation of what has to be the gold standard of shonen. The way it captures so much information and character depth in a concise number of episodes is impactful yet accessible for casual fans. 5 out of 5. Also, I reread a bunch of volumes of the manga in 2023 as well, but I think I'll start from the beginning and do a complete binge read of the manga this year to refresh my memory before continuing my manga analysis of the Succession War arc, so I'll talk more about the manga later this year. One Piece 62 episodes, which covers the entirety of the East Blue. I originally planned to catch up to One Piece by rewatching the anime, but after East Blue, I remembered how rough the pacing gets later once they stop doing filler arcs and switch to dragging scenes out and inserting tons of flashbacks into canon episodes, and I just had to stop here. A solid start to an amazing series though. I'll give this a 4 out of 5. I can't wait to see how the new One Piece anime by Wit Studio turns out, since they don't have to worry about catching up to the source material. I have really high hopes that the pacing will be tighter, so I can recommend a version of One Piece to my friends without recommending them a 1000 plus episode behemoth and sort of scaring them away. Bungo Stray Dogs seasons 4, 5, and 1, which is the spin-off little gag short series. All right, I am going to rip into Bungo Stray Dogs now, so if you don't want to hear anything negative about your favorite series, Please skip ahead to the next section. There's a little chapter separation on the time bar below. You can drag it to the next little piece. Also minor spoilers for seasons 4 and 5. I know this anime is near and dear to a lot of people, so here's an opportunity to skip ahead if you don't want to hear my critiques about it. Roast Incoming after a while, I started counting how many fake out deaths happened, and the answer is 10 in two seasons alone. Honestly, maybe there were more than 10 and I just lost count, but these seasons try so hard to convince you there are stakes when there are just not any stakes, ever. It's not, oh, we didn't see a body, so they're probably fine fake deaths either. The show really wants you to believe that the characters are dead. It wants you to mourn those characters. And then it just whips out the most BS thing to keep them alive, which just feels like a betrayal of investment, honestly. Since when has vampirism automatically cured fatal wounds, yet also been instantly reversible without any lasting side effects? That's not vampirism, that's plot convenience, virus X, my dude. Why do the mega brain characters have near omniscience? only when convenient to the plot. Why are the two 
main characters, the least interesting characters in the entire show. And why doesn't the author realize maintaining their rivalry, in quotation marks, is ruining their characterizations. There are so many specific moments which felt like the script wasn't even passed by a single beta reader for editing before getting approved. It's killing me that I can't list every single writing choice I found awful and tell you why, because spoilers, but there is a mental list uh, up here in the cranium. Feel free to talk about it with me in the comments or on Insta further if you want the details, but since the anime has caught up to the manga, all I'll say is that character which appeared in the last minute of the last episode of season 5 better, they better be an anime filler villain because if that character is canon, I might just drop the franchise altogether. Seasons 4 and 5 of Bungo Stray Dogs were so disappointing. They had me reevaluating my opinion on the entire show, which up until this point I had absolutely adored. They really had me thinking, was I just blinded by fan hype or was this show always like this? After reflecting, there, there are still good points to it. I just say they seriously need to improve the writing of the series because the premise has a lot of potential. The character designs and powers are the strongest aspects of the series as a whole and if they leaned away from the world ending brain games which the author cannot write and focus more on character dynamics and relationship drama, the series would be amazing. Explore more of the darkness within the characters and how their personal flaws hurt themselves and loved ones instead of whatever 4D holier than thou brain chess has been going on recently. Three out of five for these seasons. I'll raise the mood now by talking about Blood Blockade Battlefront or Kekai Sensen. Two seasons, 24 episodes, I believe. The series is kind of underrated considering it's by the same creator as Trigun, which is crazy popular at the moment. The series is definitely closer to Dararara and Bakano in tone, a quirky sort of chaotic city adventure following people with weird powers and how their lives intertwine. It's definitely an acquired taste. If you don't like quirky, you will not like this. If you do like quirky, this anime is a hidden gem and I definitely recommend giving it a go. Uh, it's a 5 out of 5 in my books. Golden Kamui, 4 seasons, 49 episodes, as well as chapters 244 through 314 uh, in the manga. Speaking of underrated, I was caught off guard by how amazing this series is. It is so good. Binged all of the seasons and jumped to read the ending in the manga because I needed to know what happened so bad. Um, absolutely worth it. The final season of the anime is coming out in 2024, so this year, and once the anime and dub is complete, I'll be shoving it down everyone's throats with a full detailed recommendation because just wow. This, this is peak seinen. Five stars. Akata Tonkatsu Ramen's one season, 12 episodes. If I had a nickel for every time an anime featured a side plot where dysfunctional killers form a ragtag team to play amateur baseball for fun, I'd have two nickels. 
Bonus points for the respectful depiction of a character who doesn't conform to gender norms as well. This series is about a bunch of assassins uh, killing people, but it's so cute and chill and relaxing. Four stars. Spy Family 1 season 25 episodes. I won't lie, the anime is a little much at times, especially with the dub voice acting but it's still cute, 4 out of 5. I just checked my notes and apparently I've only read 29 chapters of the manga. Thought I was further ahead, but that's alright. I'll get to season 2 of the series eventually. Buddy Daddy's 1 season 12 episodes. The fact that every gunman in the series has worse aim than stormtroopers has to be some sort of crime. A clear cash grab on the spy family bandwagon with alright execution. 3 out of 5. The Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting 1 season 12 episodes. The pacing can be a little slow at times, but overall, it's a pretty good tough guy takes care of little kids series. 4 out of 5. Chainsaw Man 1 season 12 episodes. I am deeply satisfied with this adaptation. The only thing I wanted from the anime was to make the source material more understandable while maintaining an unsettling atmosphere, and it nailed that. 4 out of 5. The dub voice acting was great as well, especially for power. I even preferred Makima's dubbed voice to her original Japanese voice. The CGI and animation looked fine as well. I liked how it was used to convey confusion during the bedroom scene. Sometimes the character faces don't quite capture emotions though, which may or may not be a con depending on how you view it as it does help maintain some aspect of realism. Potentially, they limited the exaggerated expressions to indicate a freeze response to traumatic events. I'm interested to see how the next seasons go, as this season covered a lot of setup. The Rize movie which is going to be essentially season 2, is going to cover some of my favorite scenes from the manga, so I hope it's good. Next up, I'll talk about Akudama Drive 1 season 12 episodes. They wanted to try a Suicide Squad concept, but make it Danganronpa, so this anime has all of the visual flair of Danganronpa, but the same pitfalls as well, where they introduce a bunch of bizarre concepts to explain their way out of mysteries that they set up. There's also a Suzia bootleg character, which is so hilarious because they barely changed anything. Come on, not even his hair color. There's another series that this one rips off as well, concept-wise but I won't say it because, spoilers, this has some of the same flaws as that anime. Slightly unsatisfying, 3 out of 5. Hell's Paradise 1 season 13 episodes. The anime definitely made events from the manga more understandable, but I don't know if that was a good thing for this series in particular. The horror aspect of Hell's Paradise was something I was really looking forward to because it's part of what makes this series unique. The anime doesn't really capture that sense of body horror at all. I don't know if it was the censorship of nudity or the color palette that washed out some of the unique traits of this series, but it's kind of sad the source material has so much flavor. And this adaptation, which more people are going to see because it's more accessible, makes the series feel kind of bland. Uh, 3 out of 5. A Galaxy Next Door, 1 season 12 episodes. 
a surprisingly mature, wholesome romance, good communication and characterization of realistic reactions to situations. Uh, these characters feel like adults. This anime is very vanilla, but like the good kind of vanilla with the little black bean specks in it. Four stars. Kamisama Kiss, two seasons, 25 episodes. A classic fantasy romance. Adored the series as a kid and still enjoy it, just uh, not as much. Love the fantasy elements and narrator just no longer quite feeling the chemistry between the main characters. It's not non-existent, it's just not as strong as it could be. Three stars. The opening and ending for season one of the anime though are iconic to this day. Absolute classics. Love after world domination, one season 12 episodes. A fun, trashy Power Rangers, silly rom-com, adorable main gal. I just wish the characters were in college instead of high school, four stars. ZOM 100, one season, nine episodes. A fun and humorous zombie adventure. I love the pairing of horror and comedy, which the series does amazingly, especially since it's not only zombie horror, but also oppressed by the system Weiji horror. Four stars. Uh, I can't wait to finish the series when the season is complete and potentially bump up the rating. Ice Guy and Cool Female Coworker, one season, 12 episodes. This is a super slow paced office romance. It is so slow. It feels like paint is drying at times, but that can be relaxing when all you want to do is chill, so it's not necessarily a con. The anime does do this weird eye movement animation thing, which I get what they were going for, but it happened so much that it kind of made me feel dizzy. Eventually, I had to start looking away from the screen when the close-up shot started, and I think that might be a con for me, so I'll give this a 3 out of 5. Monster, the anime, I watched 15 episodes of this. The fact that they only ever dubbed around 15 episodes of this anime is criminal. The series is clearly a masterpiece classic, and even the older animation adds to that atmosphere. As I simply do not have the time to watch a 74 or so episode series subbed, I'll be switching to the manga and rereading the entire thing from the beginning. Overall, an amazing start to such a cool mystery though. I'm, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. 5 stars for what I've seen so far. There are a couple other 2023 seasonal anime I'm still in the process of watching, so I'll review them in full next year. Shows like JJK Season 2, 100 Girlfriends, and Free Ren, so look forward to that. Alright, back to the manga. Hard Boiled Stories from the Cat Bar, Volume 1. Not actually sure, this possibly could be a one shot but it felt weird, as if a BL author wanted to write a BL story, but didn't actually want to commit. Um, not really a fan, 2 out of 5. Voices of a Distant Star, this is a one-shot. A chilling concept which captures the lonely beauty of vast space. There is an animated version of this, but it's a little old, and I would honestly die for a modern remake of it since space horror is something I love. This has a lot of potential to become a beautifully animated film for stars. Parasite Volumes 1-8 through eight Complete. This series is supposed to be horror, but honestly, I just had a good time reading the goofy antics of the MC's hand parasite which occasionally transforms into a dick to tease him. More, we need, we need more horror comedy series, please. It's such a good pairing when it's done well. The series is a 5 out of 5. 
Also, shout out to a literal flesh parasite being one of my favorite characters of the year. Bless Mickey. Mushishi Volume 1. This one's another classic where a man travels across Japan helping people with their mushishi or yokai problems. Interestingly, I've never found volumes past one in any library I've ever been to, which makes the ancient series feel even more mysterious and nostalgic somehow. I love the folklore exploration though. Lovely historical magic, quiet, somber, and whimsical. 5 out of 5. Kakurio Bed and Breakfast for Spirits Volumes 1 through 4. Even though the anime for the series was noticeably low budget and bordering on PowerPoint presentation at times, somehow I still preferred it to this manga. The artwork is very stiff and lifeless, which kind of takes the joy out of a fantasy romance series. Love the bonding through cooking trope though, so I hope the art gets better. I will keep reading it. 3 out of 5. Boy Meets Maria. This one is a one-shot, which follows a boy who discovers his love of acting and meets a beautiful actor with gender identity issues. Um, right, so massive trigger warnings for this manga. I don't recommend reading it without checking those yourself. The graphic CSA depicted in this manga is done as respectfully as this genre can do, which is not respectfully enough. Uh, important to note, this is BL, not representation. 3 out of 5. D and Angel Volume 1. I had never actually read DN Angel before, and the concept was quite 2000s. A young boy becomes a phantom thief as a curse in his family awakens along with his alter ego, whose name is Dark. The only solution to his situation being to have his crush reciprocate his feelings. This volume felt quite juvenile. Unfortunately, I think I've outgrown this type of story and humor. The humor is a lot of 2000s gag tropes, essentially, sort of similar to the ones in Ranma Half and other works from that era. I might have been more interested in this series in middle school, three stars. Uh, Daytime Shooting Star, volumes one through three. I did love the first volume a lot. The MC felt quite refreshing, and it seemed the series would do something unique. Listen, after googling the ending of the series, I tried, I tried so hard to keep reading it because I knew how it would end, and I was glad that was how it would end. But after the teacher started showing interest, in her. I just, I couldn't do it anymore, I'm sorry. Cannot stand teacher-student relationships, especially in shoujo, as it's targeted toward young girls. Um, this is three stars. Kamisama Kiss, Volume 1. The art style of this manga is, is so magical. The way Nanami is drawn, Come on, it's an effortless feeling of shoujo magic. I never finished the series as a kid, so nostalgia is motivating me to do a full reread someday. Maybe not this year, but eventually. 4 out of 5. The Girl I Want is So Handsome, Volume 1. I was hoping for some cute representation. This is not ref. Definitely more of that Moe Yuri vibe, but it was still cute at times. 3 out of 5. D. Grey Man Volumes 1 through 20. This is another classic shonen series which I never finished. As a kid, really loved the piano music from the anime though. The two lullaby songs in particular were beautiful. I'd play a clip, but the names of the songs are low-key spoilers. I'll let you discover those yourself. A 
upon reread of the manga, I noticed there's a weird disconnect between the early 2000s gag humor and the series' overarching plot mystery. I'm interested in the big picture story, but all the random intercuts of slapstick jokes and filler feeling arcs is throwing me off. The incest jokes, the slapstick faces, just make the tone confusing. It's not funny, and the fact that the slapstick is so intertwined with serious scenes just ruins both the humor and the atmosphere. I can't even tell when I'm supposed to be taking things like deaths and injuries seriously, which sucks because the Akuma are genuinely terrifying, and the overall aesthetic is quite cool. I have heard that there's a major tonal shift in the upcoming volumes, so I'm hoping the tone is going to get a bit more serious as the series nears a potential finale, three stars for what I've read so far. Tokyo Aliens Volumes 1 and 2, the synopsis is Pretty Boys Hunt Aliens in Tokyo. And that's pretty much the series, 3 out of 5. In Clothes Called Fat, this one-shot is a very bleak depiction of society and eating disorders. Honestly, I'm not sure who the target audience for this is. The book is either a poorly conceived drama or a very personal vent and neither of those things are something I want to read in relation to such a serious subject. Two stars. I am a Caparista Volume 1. Cute concept, bizarre sexualization of a cat man. This is also two stars. One Punch Man Volume 1. The Man, the Myth, the Legend. It's Saitama's series. The manga's artwork is crazy good borderline inhuman at times. I'll definitely read more when I find the next volumes. 4 stars. X1999 Prelude Volumes 1 and 2. Lovely artwork and concept as always, but at this point I'm on my hands and knees begging Clamp to stop writing bizarre romances into their series because what is this? Please man, just just focus on making the plot make sense. 3 out of 5. Sneeze. This one's a collection of short stories by Naoki Urasawa, the mangaka of Monster and 20th Century Boys. It's a lovely story collection and edition with crunch flaps and cool artwork as always. This man just has such a chill vibe to him and since some of the pages in here are autobiographical, you can, you can really feel his personality. Fantastic. 4 out of 5. Jose the Tiger and the Fish. I'm not sure if this manga one-shot or the movie came first, but regardless, this manga is perfect. A lovely execution of a simple concept, plus beautiful artwork in the ocean scenes, which lift the story even further. 5 stars. 5 out of 5. Go with the Clouds, North by Northwest, Volume 1. This one's not too well known either, I don't think. Essentially, in Iceland, a young man who can speak with objects, solves mysteries, and travels across the beautiful country. The scenery and artwork in the series is lovely, is magical. I spoke about my one issue with the series more in depth in my collection video, but I just wish the characters were less conventionally attractive. That might seem like a nitpick, but gotta be honest, it's a little immersion breaking at times. I could also do without the fan service because the tone and overarching mystery carry the work perfectly fine without it, 4 out of 5. The Haunted Bookstore Volume 1. This manga is an adaptation of a light novel I read in 2023, and I will not be continuing either format of the story. Lovely artwork and character design, but poor print quality. The page
pages of this manga feel like cheap newsprint. Not sure what's up with that, honestly, uh, since it's the same price as the publisher's other volumes of manga. The bonus light novel chapters at the end of this volume were also atrocious. Uh, not only was the writing bad, but the author was also keen to make sure readers knew there was an age gap between the main couple for no reason. Like, my dude, that's not a selling point. That's a turn off. Uh, three out of five. Other Side Picnic, Volume 1. Another victim of my post-apocalyptic manga search. This one following two girls who explore the other side. A parallel land filled with dangerous monsters. I wish the character designs were different, but I did enjoy the world, story, and horror aspects. So I hope to watch the anime adaptation sometime soon. 3 out of 5. Tropic of the Sea. This one's a one-shot by Satoshi Khan. A young boy tries to protect the mermaid's egg his family was entrusted with, caring for decades prior, admits a modern age of corporate greed and commercialization. Lovely artwork and a somber but important message. 4 out of 5. In this corner of the world, this one is a one-shot, a historical story set during World War II Japan with an important anti-war messaging, which we unfortunately seem to need in every era. This book contained one of my biggest fears. No spoilers, but that one chapter in the latter half really messed me up. Uh, this is deeply sad, yet very humanizing, very important. Uh, four stars. Sorry, my voice is low-key giving out a little bit. Trigun Volume 1. The art style of the series is a bit dated, but Trigun is a very cool and iconic manga. I won't lie, the manga intimidates me a little bit since it gets quite chaotic later. But I do plan on watching both anime adaptations of this series, 4 stars. Blood Lad Volume 1. The main chick's shirt physics were so distracting. Listen, I can't not look if her shirt that's vacuum suctioned to two bowls on her chest is the most shaded detail of every panel she's in. Could have done without the fan service, but the plot was generic, edgy shonen stuff, so maybe that was the only thing the series had going for it during publication. Three stars. Kaiju number eight, volumes one through seven. Fantastic classic shonen feel. It has lovable characters and an older protagonist as well. Kafka has old man energy, and we love him for it. The pacing of the series is a little quicker than I expected, but the fact that I don't want the series to end probably speaks to how much I'm loving it. 5 out of 5. The Gods Lie. This is one of those one-shots that explores a little dramatic story idea the author thought of, and it executes that idea pretty well. 3 out of 5. Don't Call It Mystery, two omnibuses which cover the first four volumes of the series. The atmosphere of the series is so uniquely relaxing. Reading it is like a lullaby. Listen, I'm not following any of the stuff he's saying, and I could not care less about the meanings of gemstones and star signs, but at this point the main character is my son and I listen to him talk for hours, and talk for hours he does. This series is 100% an acquired taste, but I've really been enjoying it. 4 out of 5. Firefly Marriage chapters 1 through 15. This one's a fun romance series with imperfect main characters and solid art. A sadistic at times girl and a yandere guy, essentially. I'd give this a 4 out of 5. If this series has not been licensed in English yet, I can definitely see it getting picked up soon. 
because a lot of manga tubers have been really loving it and the art is quite good. Magus of the Library, I believe it's pronounced, volumes 1 through 3. This series is so underrated. It's so underrated, it had me repeatedly checking the tags on manga sites to make sure there was no catch to the story. I adore the representation of darker characters and characters wearing hair coverings as well, which are both rare to see portrayed in manga even today. The series romanticizes reading, knowledge, and learning, which is such a timeless message, and it's already made me cry multiple times, um, in a good way, in a good way. There are a couple more volumes in this ongoing series out already, and I'll definitely be picking them up this year, 5 out of 5. Blam Volume 1 After a couple years of searching for a good post-apocalyptic manga with the same vibes as my favorite anime of all time, Girls Last Tour, I think, I think I've finally found it. I've read some of Nihei's other works, being Knights of Sidonia and Aposims, well... I think I watched the anime adaptation of Knights of Sidonia, but this one's definitely my favorite work of his that I've seen so far. Absolutely gorgeous sci-fi post-apocalyptic scenery with a fantastic sense of space and vastness. Even the monsters convey a surprising amount of horror, which wasn't a surprise. I cannot wait to read the rest of the series. It's really shaping up to be something special. 5 out of 5. Insomniacs After School Volumes 1 through 3. Everything about this series is captured with a single word. Cozy. The premise is cozy. Two insomniacs start an astronomy club so they can nap together. The character design is cozy. Somehow the artist conveys a lovely sense of squishiness with minimal lines, and the heartwarming soft relationship between the two is also cozy. They have great chemistry, and even when character flaws come up in the story, it's done in a way which feels soft and human. 5 out of 5. Absolutely adoring this one. A School Frozen in Time Volume 1. The premise of this manga is really cool. Essentially, one year a kid died and now a group of students linked to that kid are trapped in the school where they have to uncover their lost memories about that kid in order to escape. Sounds kind of like the setup for an RPG maker or horror game. That said, the art, dialogue, and characterizations are not doing the premise justice. I'd give volume 1 a 3 out of 5. Since I won't be reading the rest of the series, I'll make a guess right now that the girl from the beginning of volume 1 is the one who died, since there's an introduction scene where a dude throws a snowball at her and she falls backward into the snow, possibly a parallel to her real death where she fell backwards off the roof. That may be completely wrong, but feel free to tell me in the comments if you want. Um, I really don't mind since I'm definitely dropping this series. Ride Your Wave. This is a decent manga one-shot adaptation of the film, I believe, which I think came out first, but it's not doing the water nor romance justice. This manga is the definition of bare minimum serviceable artwork. It's it's just all right. Three stars. Deadpool Samurai Volume 1. The fourth wall breaking humor was funny at first, but then they just kept going. I think I would have enjoyed it a bit more if I was 10 years younger. Three stars. Look Back by Fujimoto, a lovely one-shot. I cried so much while reading this, 
that there was a pool of tears on my desk. Five out of five. I would highly recommend this for creatives. For example, if you draw, if you write, if you compose music, um, you'll probably really enjoy this. Non-creatives would probably find it okay. Um, Kawaii Hito, 30 chapters. The concept is a pretty girl and a shy boy with scary eyes, quotation mark, fall in love. This manga is so sweet. The sugar overdose knocked me out and I just, I could not finish it. It's a lovely concept though. Would love to see it get redone in a modern style someday. Three out of five. The Jojo Lands chapters one through eight. I've been absolutely loving this new part so far and I'm keen to enjoy it as much as I can before it starts getting too confusing for me to follow which has happened with the last couple Jojo parts, Steel Ball Run and Jijolian. I always vibe with the setup, but then lose the thread when the big bad stand powers are introduced. I adore the protag of this part though and his general vibe. Joe Dio is another character which, he's got some flaws, but he's like a son, a little brother character. He sells drugs, he probably kills small animals in the backyard, like, oh well. What can you do? You can't not love him. Uh, four out of five for the Jojo Land so far. Also, every day we get closer to Steel Ball Run being animated, and I can't wait to finally understand what was up with Valentine. And last, but certainly not least, One Piece. One thousand. 103 chapters or 104 volumes. Finally catching up on One Piece by doing a complete reread of the manga was easily one of the most satisfying moments of 2023. It took roughly a month to read every volume, but yeah, it was an amazing time. The series is both nostalgic and thought-provoking for me, which is a rare treat because it's usually one or the other. I won't ramble too long because the next video will be solely dedicated to my thoughts on the One Piece series and I'll go into depth in that one. It'll be a long one because I have a lot to say, but ugh, for now. Being able to read weekly is an exhilarating feeling since so much of the joy of One Piece comes from discussing it with friends and fellow fans and seeing what the community is up to, what the general consensus is at the time, and reading the essay length theories on Reddit. The fanbase just elevates the series so much. But about the manga itself, it's an absolute classic, it's an epic adventure, it's honestly a national treasure at this point, it's a 5 out of 5 manga. Um, that is all of them. Here is a graphic of the distribution of ratings, because graphs and stats are delicious and very satisfying to look at. And here is every five-star manga I read in 2023, and also the five-star animes. Every single one of these are fantastic, and if any of them interest you in any way, uh, definitely give them a shot. They're, they're worth a shake. Thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to reading a bunch of good stuff in 2024 as well, and good night.